In this video, I'll walk you through the AI dev setup my agency uses every day. Tools like Lovable and Bolt are amazing for prototyping, but to build a production ready app, the next step is a proper development environment on your computer. My agency spent the last six months perfecting this setup and I'll show you how to avoid the common mistakes to save yourself hours of frustration. We'll cover installing Node.js the right way, using GitHub desktop, picking an IDE and AI agent and fixing common errors. This is a fast track version of an 18 page guide from my idea to app school community that I'll keep referring to. Let's get started. For those of you on Mac, you can skip the first step, which is installing Windows subsystem for Linux. All the rest you can follow on your Mac. Now for Windows, the recommendation is to not use regular Windows with PowerShell and the recommendation is to use Windows subsystem for Linux. A whole bunch of the tooling around development environment works best on Linux or Mac. It does not usually work best on PowerShell or Windows' own terminal setup. Now, Microsoft has made it super easy to install WSL. All you have to do is run this command, all right? So you open PowerShell, make sure to click run as administrator, and then you run that command. I had the administrator pop-up come through. I've already run it, so I don't really need to do this again. This will install Ubuntu on your computer. I've already installed it, so I've received an error, but on your case, you'll receive a complete installation. You can check it by running Ubuntu, which will open a terminal. That means your Ubuntu setup is now complete. The next thing is to not install Node.js. A lot of people make this mistake. I've made this mistake. I went to Node.js, I installed it. What that does is installs Windows version of Node.js on command line and PowerShell. We don't want that. We want to install Node.js on Linux. And we also don't want to install Ubuntu's regular way of apt install Node.js. It will install some version of Node.js. The recommended approach is to use Node version manager because as you work on different projects, different code bases, some of them, like for example, you take a lovable project, a bold project, they may end up relying on a different version of Node, maybe 18, maybe 20 different packages. Node version manager lets you switch between Node versions instantly. So it's very simple. There's a GitHub link here. I've got it open already. And it gives you a script to run in your command line. Now note, you don't have to run anything after this. You can run on a Mac or on Ubuntu inside Windows, but don't run anything on Windows terminal directly. So I'll open Ubuntu and all I have to do is paste that script, right click, paste it and run it, okay? I've already got it installed, so it's not letting me do much, but for your case, Sometimes you may have to run it with sudo and enter your password, but other than that, it should all just work easily. The next step after that is to install Node.js through NVM, all right? It's very easy. Now you may be wondering which Node.js version should I install? The recommendation for a new project is to use the LTS version. All even numbers are LTS. How do we know this? Node LTS. I asked Gemini and it'll tell us, okay, even numbered versions are of Node.js are LTS. And you can ask this directly from NVM as well. So if I open Ubuntu and I say NVM-H, which gives me all the helpful commands, within this it says NVM install hyphen LTS. That's the one which will install the long-term stable release on my computer, all right? Uh, if you've got an existing project on Lovable or Bold, whichever, just go to the file, go to the code base, Copy that package JSON, okay? Go to your favorite AI coding editor. I can go to Gemini. I'll paste that as like, which node version should I use, all right? Using that package.json, any AI LLM ID, any AI chatbot will just understand it and tell you. For this particular project, I think it will tell me node 20. Yeah, so node 20 is fine. I can go node 2022. I can go node 22 as well because that's also LTS. Okay, that's the recommendation. So that's the easy approach here. To switch between NVM use, NVM list. Yeah, so these are the two installed and I can just swap between them. NVM use v24.3.0. This just switched to NVM 2024 20, now, all right? The next step is about which IDE is best. Cursor, Windsurf, Code, Code Insiders. My recommendation, just go for Visual Studio Code it's free. If you're a beginner and just starting out, just go with that one, it's free and it works great with Windows Subsystem for Linux and as millions of people use it, 
and it just works. All the new features and other IDs, they go into Visual Studio Code in a while anyways. So it's this link. I see download for Windows, you'll see download for Mac or whatever other platform you have. Download, click setup and just install. It's a regular sound software, you'll be fine. I'll show in a while how to open it correctly with our code base. The next step is GitHub. So GitHub is where you will store the code. It's like Google Drive for your code base. Everybody uses it. Millions of people use it around the world and a lot of the platforms that we work with are integrated with GitHub. Now using Git from the command line is hard. So using Git via Visual Studio Code or GitHub Desktop makes it super straightforward. You don't have to mess around with authentication keys and just connecting the right thing. It just makes the whole process so much easier. So just go to this link and download GitHub Desktop. It will also automatically install Git for you and it just makes the process quite simple. So for example, if I open GitHub Desktop, I can easily like clone a repository, which is like downloading a repository from my GitHub into my local computer. So I can just clone any repository. So UK link bio, this one, and I can choose where to install it. Now choosing for Windows, for Mac, you'll be fine. For Windows, you have to be careful. When you open this, you have to make sure you go to your Linux part. So it's slash slash wsl.localhost. That's the Linux part. Okay, slash slash wsl.localhost, that will open Linux. And within that, home and your username will be the folder to work in. The best thing you should do is probably just make a folder named get. I've already done that and you can do it using just mkdir get. That will make a folder. I already have one, so I don't need to do it again. In that folder, once you clone the repositories there, it just make it so much easier to work with. So let me open GitHub desktop and show you how I clone my repository from my remote GitHub into my local computer. So I'll just open Ubuntu. I'll just open GitHub desktop. I've already signed up and connected to my account and I've already connected my lovable repo to my GitHub account. From there, I can go to clone repository. I can find that repository, UK bio link hub. I can choose where to install it. By default, it may install it in the regular Windows. For Mac, you guys need, can skip these next 30 seconds. For Windows, just make sure you choose slash slash wsl.localhost. That's the path of your Linux installation that you just did. So you can go to Ubuntu, home, your username, and just make a folder here, or you can go directly here. So just select this folder or you can make a, I personally use Git because I've got a whole bunch of other folders, but you can just go directly in your home folder as well. After that, all I have to do is click clone and it will automatically fetch in. I don't have to fiddle with the command line. It fetched all the directory and the repository from GitHub is now available on my local computer now. So I can click open Visual Studio Code insiders here. Now the downside of this is that it has opened Visual Studio Code without the Linux part. I can easily click open Visual Studio Code here. And after that, it will automatically pop up. Your folder is on Windows subsystem for Linux. Should I open this folder in WSL mode? And I can click this button and open this folder in WSL mode. That is the preferred route. What does WSL mode mean? That means if I go terminal, new terminal here, I'm seeing my Ubuntu terminal. Okay, this command line, this is a bash shell. Okay, everything I do here is bash and Windows subsystem for Linux. If I open code directly, let me just open Visual Studio Code directly and try and open any folder. In fact, the same folder perhaps. If I open Visual Studio Code directly, using the terminal will open the command line or PowerShell. The better way that I found to open Visual Studio Code and make sure it's WSL connected is to open it through Ubuntu. All right. All I have to do is go to my folder, CD get CD UK link bio hub. That's the folder that I was working in and type code dot here. Okay. The way I like to open Visual Studio Code is not through Windows regular. I can do Visual Studio Code here, but I don't want to open it in a random place with a random connection. I want to open it through Ubuntu. That will automatically configure the right environment. So I'll just open Ubuntu. I'll navigate to my folder, okay? And I'll just type code dot. That will open code, Visual Studio Code, in this folder with the right connection setup with Windows subsystem for Linux connection setup already. 
So when you open Visual Studio Code, normally it will open in PowerShell mode. We don't want to do that. So how do I know that? So if I open Visual Studio Code and I open the terminal, this says PowerShell Core. I don't want that. I want this to open in Windows Subsystem for Linux mode. I need to install the WSL extension. So I go click here and I type WSL. It's an extension by Microsoft like 35 million downloads install it and that's it it automatically popped up your folder is in WSL should I reopen the folder in WSL sure and now it's connected it's opening the remote and the bottom left I trust the authors and now if I open the terminal it will open Linux or bash or Ubuntu the next time this will be much better so I can close it I can go to Ubuntu I can click CD get CD you get bio code dot it should automatically connect WSL from the get-go. All right, now for the hardest question of them all, which AI coding agent? My recommendation, Claude Code. It just gets it, but it is a little bit expensive. The best free option at the moment is Gemini CLI. And if you've got a ChatGPT subscription, you also have unlimited requests through OpenAI Codex. These are the links and you can install them. They all pretty much install the same way npm hyphen something install something all right so i can show you the different links so claude this is how to install it gemini this is how to install it and codex this is how to install it and every time you'll have to install it on your ide the installation has to happen in ubuntu not in your command line or something else so i can open ubuntu and i can install copy this paste it here install I've already gotten installed the worst it can do is just update it but you'll go through some steps and install it now to test our setup works I like to do this using a simple next.js plus superbase starter kit that's the tech stack that we use at our agency I'll just make a folder and I'll copy a template all right so let me just open Ubuntu and cd get mkdir test YouTube right so this will download a working Next.js app in this particular folder. It will install all the packages. It can take a bit of time depending on your computer and internet setup. But after that, I'll end up with a functioning app and I'll check my setup in like one minute. So it's created the folder with Superbase app and it also has given me the instructions, npm run dev. So I go inside, I can run npm run dev here, but I prefer to work within code so I'll just open code and just go from there instead. I'll go run terminal, new terminal, and then npm run dev, all right? So what it will do is spin up a computer. Code is nice, it pops up, your application's running on port 3000. Open in browser, it opens it. My IDE, is it working? Yes, my terminal window subsystem working, running. Node.js, Next.js, they're all set up and running now. I've got my GitHub Copilot AI coding agent, which is pretty useful as well for simple things. And I can open another terminal here and I can run Claude dot, and that will open Claude here in this particular folder with access to this folder. It can read, write, execute files in this folder. So I go yes, and it'll just start initializing and checking what's the code base, what's everything, how everything runs. If I want to make a small edit, I'll just ask it, let's change this to tutorial setup. All right, so it will find that line of code. It will change that line of code. So it searched through the code base on this. And once it's found that, it will just change it to tutorial setup. It will ask for permission. It found the file and the exact place. It asks for permission. I'm like, yes, make the change. It needs to change it in one other place. All I have to do now is alt tab and it's already tutorial set up with Superbase and Next.js. So that's a quick demo of how the AI agent and IDE and localhost development will work. Now things do go wrong. Okay. Something breaks, some mistake happens. The easiest way is to ask your AI agent. You've installed Claude, you've installed GitHub Copilot, copy paste the error into it, ask it, what is this? Can you explain something, how it happened instead of just like fix this, it's easier to like explain the error to me and how it happened. And it's like, okay, what are the possible ways to fix it? Now, please fix it. That three-step loop makes it so much easier. So congratulations, your environment set up. Time to start building your next project. 
If you get stuck or you have more questions, drop them in the comment below. I've got guides on the whole tech stack that our agency uses and how we use AI for wireframing and prototyping and discovery now. And I've got an idea to app community, which has more courses. It has a 70 minute crash course on how production ready deployment works. A zero to production SaaS build it took me 15 hours to record. It's there as well. I've got weekly live Q and A calls as well, where you get the opportunity to ask me any questions. And there's a network of like a hundred plus members in the community. Now they're all professional, no coders or ambitious founders talking about their next MVP. So I'd love to see you. All right. Thanks. Bye.